<laughs> this is so ridiculous. So this video is gonna have a couple of firsts. Uh, it won't be the first time that I've just like read off of a product review guide because I don't know anything about the product, but it will be the first time that I'll have a juiced up edition phone. It will be the first time that I'll be showing off a fingerprint sensor under the screen of a commercial product and it will be the first time that we have shot an entire video on a stabilized gimbal setup. Move it around, move it around. Whoa, look at that. It's like he's walking, man. Walk more, Brandon, you got this. <laughs> and this video is brought to you by PIA. Private internet access features fast, multi-gigabit VPN tunnel gateways worldwide. So if you're looking for a VPN, you can learn more about PIA through the link in the video description. So Vivo is a phone brand that we've never really checked out before in the past, but there are a couple of things about this guy that are actually pretty interesting. So first of all, this is the first phone that I've yet to get my hands on that has Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 660 AIE processor in it. So it's AI and like experience engine? It was engine. All right, so let's fire this up. It's running the Fun Touch OS, which I think has to be the best name for an Android skin yet. And the first thing that you're gonna notice about this thing is that screen to bezel ratio. They have actually cracked the 90% barrier thanks to their use of a notch, which you can feel however you do or don't feel about it. It's a thing, it's not going away and thanks to their use of an underscreen fingerprint sensor, which also lets you not have the fingerprint sensor on the back, which some people like, but I'm not personally a fan of. It's actually kind of amazing how few features you have to give up with like these more value-oriented phones now. Like it doesn't have wireless charging or anything, but it at least has NFC. Let's see if I could find the antenna anywhere. Eh. Does it not? Connect it to the USB port. Nope. Apparently still a thing. No NFC. So this is it. This is the big moment. Add fingerprint, four digit password. Oh wow, they've got security questions? What was the name of your primary school? Uh, but Central Elementary. Whenever the fingerprint sensor is active and it's under the screen right here, you can't see it pretty much at all. You're gonna have this uh, this blue and greeny kind of light up. Better recognition with a slightly deeper press. Huh. Okay, well it didn't get me that time. Okay. So it's pretty slow compared to some of the more modern, not under a screen fingerprint sensors that we've become used to. It's especially noticeable when you compare this to, uh, shoot, what phone was that recently that I checked out? Where you could just swipe your finger down the sensor, right, the S9, and it would register the whole thing. This is, this is pretty tedious. Wow, this thing is actually not that cheap. So rumored pricing is around 36,000 Indian rupees, which would make it about 540 US dollars. So it's not up there with like flagship phone pricing, but it's actually not that inexpensive. So here, this is our first chance to take a look at this functionality in action. You see that? The OLED screen lights up bright. That gives the sensor under the display enough illumination to read the identifying ridges on your finger. Yeah, let me try it again. So, and for, oh, that's nice. So it's got an OLED display. So that means that it can have just the fingerprint pixels active. So you can actually wake the whole thing without pressing. That's not bad. You know what? Here, why don't we just do like a, a, a fingerprint sensor speed test? Let me grab a couple of other devices and uh, here. What, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with like the other like Chinese brands or should I start with like something kind of more flagshipy like the S9? 
Chinese brand? Okay. So here it is next to the Mi Mix 2S. Oh, how do I, <laughs> the sensors are on either side. Okay, you guys are gonna have to take my word for it. I'm pressing it at the same time. One, two, three, go. Not bad. It's not far off. All right, Pixel 2 XL. Faster, but not world's faster. Like we're not talking iPhone 6 here. Uh, is this embargoed? I actually don't know. Uh, put that there. Mate 10 Pro. Galaxy S9. iPhone 10. My face ID is broken, so. No fingerprint sensor. Why did they take it off? Right, because they didn't have, apparently, the technology that Vivo has. I should do a video where I try and get Apple to fix it. Get started. Face ID is not available. Trying it later doesn't work, by the way. So like any modern phone, one of the big features is the camera. So I'm just gonna be testing the stabilization while I walk down the stairs. And I'm also giving you guys a look at the stabilized rig that Brandon's using to shoot this. I don't know if I'm at the bottom yet. How close am I? I don't know. Okay, I'm at the bottom. Got this. Uh, so I've got an iPhone 10 compared to the Vivo X21 here. Hi, Taryn. I'm lacking stability with this door. Oh, the iPhone 10 handles that backlight a lot better in spite of the AI camera features. Whoa. Uh, it's not helpful, but thank you, anyway. So I actually really like taking test pictures here because you've got this these really bright colors, you've got this nice blue sky, and then you've got these hard shadows. And uh, that's something that even with HDR is quite difficult for smartphone cameras to handle. So now I wanna see how it handles lower light. I mean, that really is the main difference for cell phone cameras these days is how they handle processing the image as opposed to the sensor's really getting a lot better generation by generation. It just crashed. Huh, I never thought I was gonna capture that on camera. Since after I've done my review, I have had a few just random hard resets like that. And I asked Samsung about it and they were like, no, no I have no idea what you're talking about. So this thing's got all kinds of tech that you might not expect on sort of a, a mainstream performance phone. And it uses micro USB. What year is it? Does it have wireless charging? I guess I could consult my doodad here. So the glass back is for looks um, and for feel. And it actually does look and feel pretty good. Uh, it was not to enable wireless charging anyway. Oh man, that in-screen unlock, that is so cool. I gotta give them credit. The specs to price ratio, pretty impressive if that's correct because it's got 128 gigs of storage, so you can take a lot of those photos, and six gigs of RAM. So overall impressions here are decent. Like obviously it captured the image, but it lost a lot of detail in the darkest parts of the scene here that was retained by all of the other cameras. Even if Xiaomi didn't do a great job of their color science here, you can tell these greens are like, these are like neon bushes. And then as for low light, the Pixel 2 XL and the S9 Plus were the ones that got the color closest. And then the iPhone 10, the Mi Mix 2S, and the Vivo X21 all kind of went all yellow and have a lot of processing and noise artifacts. Yeah, the X21 was the worst in the low light scenario. And the construction doesn't really stand out either. It's well balanced in the hand. I've got to give them credit for that. And this curved glass back actually both looks and feels better in person than the camera's probably capturing. But I do have to say the way that they've joined the front panel assembly here to the rear casing uh, is pretty last gen. You can see a very noticeable ridge between them. With all of that said though, the screen looks fantastic. It really does feel like a giant display floating in your hand. The cost is very reasonable. They ship it with an included screen protector and lo and behold, they weren't able to make it waterproof, obviously. That's not anywhere in the rating, but 
it's got a headphone jack. So for the price, I'm actually liking this thing a lot, even though this was far from an in-depth review. I've yet to see where they're going with the whole AI processor aspect of it. Uh, it's supposed to optimize both battery life in terms of giving less resources to stuff that you don't care about and more to stuff that you do, as well as helping with the camera. Um, but that's something that's gonna take time to continue to develop. For $2,500, it wasn't giving us the audio quality we expected. So when we On the subject of audio quality that I might expect, the speakers on this do leave a lot to be desired. Synchronizing audio in post is fine for feature films, but it's a nightmare for our... They get loud, so that's not bad, but I've actually come to expect now a powered secondary speaker up here so you get a little bit of stereo effect at the very least. Man, that screen looks good though. I love ultra-wide displays, which is why it's all the more a mystery why this isn't stretching to the edges. I'm gonna have to find something else for that. Man, this display looks good for like a value phone though. Isn't that crazy? It's even got P3 color space support. On the subject of things that are a great value, Ting! Ting is the mobile carrier that's focused on customer service and customer satisfaction. And with Ting, you don't have to pay for more than the airtime that you use. All you gotta do is go to linus.ting.com. We're gonna have that linked in the video description. You enter your last few bills and how much you paid for them, and it will spit out how much money you would save on Ting. The average Ting bill is just 23 bucks a month per device. Ting has a program where if you're stuck in a contract and you want to switch to them, they'll pay 25% of your cancellation fee up to 75 bucks. And just by using our link, you can get 25 bucks towards your service or towards a new device. So go check them out. That's linus.ting.com. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join. You know, as far as Android skins go, this is far from the worst that I've seen. I actually really like the, uh, the pull up tray that they got going on here. It's kind of uh, iOS-y other than the iPhone 10-y.